Hi, and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the two to four player game, Quirky Circuits, designed by Nikki Valens and published by Plat Hat Games, who helped sponsor this video. There's a bunch of tasks to complete, but don't worry, our robot friends are here to help. The only problem is that we all think we know best how to program their movement. And we probably don't. So join me at the table, and let's learn how to play. To set up, place the scenario book in the middle of the play area, and the page that you turn to will act as the board of the game. And there are 24 unique scenarios included in this book, and you can play any of them that you like, but if this is your first game, it is recommended that you start at the very first scenario and work through each of them in order. Each scenario will involve one of the included robot figures, and you'll find it pictured here within the scenario. In this case, we're going to be using Gizmo. Collect its figure and reference tile, and these reference tiles are double-sided, so check both sides for the one you need. In this case, we'll take this one and Gizmo's figure here. Each robot has its own command cards, and you can identify these by the pictures on them. And they come in two different types, basic, which are blue, and advanced, which are yellow. Just collect the basic ones for now, setting the others aside. Place the robot figure onto the space of the board with this symbol, facing in the direction of the arrow, and then put this battery marker onto the highest space of the battery track here. Now check the scenario for any other instructions. Here we're told to put a dust bunny token onto each space marked with its symbol, and I already have some of these placed, so I'll just put the remaining two here. This also instructs us that if Gizmo enters or moves through a space with one of these tokens, it will be removed from the board. You should also check the robot's own special rules, which will be printed here on its tile. For example, this one says that when Gizmo collides with an obstacle or barrier, it halts its movement and rotates left. And we'll see how that works a little bit later. Sometimes a scenario like this later one will instruct you to add other cards to the command deck, like these advanced ones. In the scenario we're playing, we won't need them, so we'll return these to the box. Make sure to read over any other instructions related to the scenario. For example, here we're told that spaces outlined in yellow are obstacles. Robots cannot move through them, and if they collide with an obstacle, they must stop. In a similar way, a white border, like we see all the way around this room, signifies a barrier. Robots cannot move through these, and if they would collide with a barrier, they must also stop their movement. With all the additional scenario setup steps covered, shuffle the command cards into a face-down deck and then deal a number of them to each person based on the number of players. Five each in a two-player game, like we're setting up here, or four each if it's a three- or four-player game. And that's the setup. In Quirky Circuits, players will use the cards from their hand to move the robot around the board to achieve the objective, which you'll find explained in the goal section of the scenario. Here we're told that we need to remove all of the dust bunnies from the board and then return Gizmo back to this space before the battery hits zero. The cards in our hand will provide directions for how the robot will move, but we're never allowed to tell the other players what we have in our hands or what commands we just played. Instead, we'll need to trust our intuition and the smarts of our fellow players to do the right thing. And when they, or we, don't, then we'll need to figure out how to get back on track. The game is played over a series of rounds, and each round is broken into three phases, starting with the program phase. Here, players choose cards from their hands, which are known as commands, to place face down in a row from left to right. And this isn't done in turns. Instead, if you have a card that you think should be played, just put it into the row to the right of any cards that are already there. Now, each player must contribute at least one command to the row. But when you play them, you can drop several at once. Just make sure that anything new that you add goes to the right of any cards that are already there. This is important because the order of the cards may not be rearranged once they're placed. The commands in the row will control the movement of the robot in the next phase. But here's the catch. Players can never communicate to each other what is on the hidden side of a card they are holding or on one that they've already played. You also can't discuss strategy or your intentions, and you cannot make suggestions on what commands the other players should be playing. However, the backs of the cards will share some information with the other players, and these you should keep visible for everyone. The basic commands either show arrows like this, which means that the other side will move the robot in some way, or like this, that means the other side will turn the robot. 
Now in later scenarios, you'll get advanced commands, which don't give you any meaningful clues, except to let you know that by this symbol, something is going to happen when you flip that card over. It could be a turn, like this one here, or a move, or something else. Remember, each player must add at least one command card to the row, but players will often need to add more because this phase will not end until there are at least five commands here, though you can add more than that if you want. To signal to the other players that you believe you should personally be done adding cards to the row, you can set your hand of cards face down on the table. And to signal that you think the group should be done, you can set your hands on the table. Once you have at least five commands in the row and everyone is done adding any new ones, you then move to the execute phase. Here you flip all of the cards in the row face up and then you execute the commands from left to right, one at a time, based on the symbol shown in the top left-hand corner. You'll also find a reminder of how the effect works at the bottom, but let's go through some of the symbols that you'll encounter and we'll see how they work. A single upward arrow means you move the robot one space forward in the direction that it's facing. If you see two arrows, move it two spaces forward, or three spaces if you see three arrows. An arrow pointing down moves the robot backwards one space. This rotates it 90 degrees to the left, this rotates it 90 degrees to the right. And an arrow like this rotates it a full 180 degrees, so it's facing the opposite direction. Those are the commands you'll find in the Gizmo robot deck, which are also all explained here in the rulebook if you have any further questions. But you'll also see there's a variety of other commands, and these will come up in the later scenarios when you're playing with the other types of robots. So refer back to this section of the rulebook to learn about how they work at that time. For now though, let's resolve the commands we placed in our row. First, we moved Gizmo two spaces forward. And as the scenario told us, each dust bunny space we enter or pass through removes it from the board. So far, so good. Then we turned left. Next, we moved three spaces forward. However, we're told spaces with a yellow line are obstructions and they halt movement. Anytime something causes a robot to halt, you stop resolving the current card and then you proceed to the next one. However, we can't forget Gizmo's ability. It says that whenever Gizmo collides with a barrier or an obstacle, Gizmo halts its movement and then turns left. Well, unfortunately, our next command turns Gizmo right facing the obstacle again. Then this command would move Gizmo forward one space, causing Gizmo's ability to trigger, stopping and turning Gizmo left, and finally, we then turn Gizmo 180 degrees. All right, that's not so terrible. We did collect a couple of dust bunnies and we're now facing in a direction where we see some more ahead of us. That said, once all the cards in the queue have been executed, you move to the reset phase. Here you collect and shuffle the command cards from the row and then place them on the bottom of the deck. Then move the battery marker down one space. If it's now on the zero and the players have not accomplished the goal of the scenario, they immediately lose. Otherwise, starting with the player holding the fewest cards and going clockwise, deal new cards to everyone until they are back to a full hand size, skipping over players once their hand is full. You're now ready to begin a new round. The game continues like this until either the players lose by running out of battery, or they win by completing the scenario's goal, which is removing all of the dust bunnies and then returning to the home space. As soon as the goal is achieved, the players immediately win. For a greater challenge, players should try to complete the goal before the battery leaves the yellow zone, or for true experts, while it's still in the green zone. With the scenario completed, you can then go on to the next scenario, and then the next, with each adding new challenges, rules, and goals. Instead of removing items from the board, you may have to pick them up and take them to new locations. Sometimes you have to solve puzzles with the pieces that you collect, or prepare food and serve it to hungry animals. The scenarios are quite varied and you'll have a variety of new moves and abilities to explore as well. And I recommend you learn these as you go, ensuring you check the page on clarifications at the back for some of the more complex actions. Otherwise, that's everything you need to know to play Quirky Circuits. If you have any questions about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos and lots more over on the games page at Board Game Geek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get a notification anytime we post a new video. But 
Until next time, thanks for watching.